what's up everybody this is motor Merc coming to you from beautiful southern california with a story that has nothing to do with southern california actually this story is about alaska and the reason i'm doing a story about alaska is because my girlfriend and i went on a cruise there this past summer we go on a trip like some kind of vacation to unwind usually once a year or so and this past summer we decided to go to Alaska and uh, take a cruise there and the reason we decided to do that is because my girlfriend likes cruises and because I've never been on one before and I thought it'd be cool to try it out and Alaska is one of the classic cruises that a lot of people will say that you should go on because it's just really nice pretty easy there's not a lot of stress or concern on it you just kind of like go on the cruise and it's just a relaxing vacation so we did that it was a uh, an eight day seven night trip overall we flew up to Seattle got on the boat there visited a few spots in Alaska and came back down to Seattle and then flew home so this is going to be the first in a series of videos in which I recount the Alaska trip and share some of the footage that I took. I tried to take some video while I was there so I'd have something to share and something to remember it by. And I've got some new help that's going to make it a little nicer and a little easier for me to recount the trip for you guys. I'm going to slow down for these train tracks here for a second because those are that's a really bumpy set of train tracks. Uh, but anyway, you may notice that the audio in this video is going to be a little better than it's been in my previous videos, and that's because I finally dropped some money on a condenser mic. I finally got a lavalier condenser microphone, so I can finally get some good uh, audio quality in my videos, and it's, that's been a long time coming, and it's about time, so yeah. Uh, so anyway, just to give you a real quick brief overview of what the cruise entailed, uh, we flew up to Seattle on the first day, got on the boat that same day, and then it was an eight day, seven night cruise. Uh, we spent the first two days at sea, uh, then we visited Ketchikan, then we visited Juneau, then we visited Skagway, then we spent two more days at sea and visited Victoria, British Columbia, Canada on our way back to Seattle where we caught a plane to come home. So that's a brief overview of the trip and I'm just going to kind of divide this series up into individual videos based on each leg of the trip pretty much. So the first video is going to be about those first two days at sea and about cruising in general because uh, if you've never been on a cruise like I had never been on one before this trip, uh, it's pretty pretty amazing experience. I've got to say I, I had some expectations going in from talking to people about cruising, you know talking to veteran cruisers and uh, uh, It just it didn't quite you know the explanations and descriptions people gave me of things didn't quite do justice to the actual experience uh, So the first thing that you'll notice when you go on a cruise obviously is the the sheer size of the ship I mean, everybody knows cruise ships are big, right? But when you actually walk out of the terminal building and stand next to that thing for the first time and you're looking up at it and looking up and down the length of it, it's it's out of this world, man. That, those things are huge. And the boat that we went on, sorry, it's not a boat, it's a ship. Uh, but the ship that we went on, uh, what was it called? The Norwegian Jewel, I think? Uh, that we were we cruised with Norwegian and we were uh, so the <laughs> our boat uh, sorry it's a ship it's not a boat our boat is one of a pair of sister ships the Norwegian Pearl and the Norwegian Jewel and th basically those two ships are the same layout same size and these these two ships are two of the smaller cruise ships in Norwegian's fleet and even these smaller ships are just enormous. It's like crazy when you get on. It like takes you five minutes, ten minutes just to walk up and down the thing. So the size kind of blows you away. Just, I mean, they carry 2,500 passengers. They have multiple uh, full-size theaters that you can sit in to watch like shows, like uh, musicals, dance shows, magician shows, stuff like that. 
they have multiple restaurants they have like a, an arena soccer field so much stuff these, these ships are gigantic like it's hard to explain just with words you, it, it really is something that you can't appreciate it unless you've actually had the opportunity to see it so yeah the, the size of these things is just it really like it's it's really cool it's really cool to be on one of those boats sorry ships I will say though that despite the size of the ship some of the accommodations are quite small and it can be frustrating for a tall guy like myself uh, because you know these ships even though they are huge they're also trying to pack as much stuff as they can into a small amount of space so it ends up being that the ceilings are really low the doorways are low and narrow and the the rooms that you actually sleep in are are quite small because they you know you're just not expected to spend a lot of time in there you're expected to be out and about sort of enjoying all of the the nice uh, amenities that the ship offers you like the shows the dining and stuff and there is a whole hell of a lot to go around in that respect so we didn't spend a whole lot of time in the room other than sleeping uh, but when you look at the room you, you'll see how small it was and actually st simple stuff like uh, going to the bathroom was even a challenge on this ship because the the restrooms are not designed for people who are as tall as i am i'm six foot four so sitting on the toilet like to when i had to go and uh take a, a number two uh, I'd actually have to sit on the toilet like sideways or like kind of diagonal or like twist myself around in weird ways just to get myself to fit on it so that was a an interesting experience but yeah like I said you don't actually spend a lot of time in the rooms there's so much stuff to do like the theaters have got something going on every night we saw a magician show we saw a musical we saw something that was like a Cirque du Soleil like acrobatics uh, action kind of a show we saw did I say magician already I think I said it earlier but we saw a magician and he was great and all these shows like they're not chintzy cheap crappy like filler shows they're all actually really good like these are the kind of shows you could imagine people actually spending money on to go and see in Vegas or something it's like they really take care of their passengers and actually that was one of my concerns with this particular cruise line uh, when I told people that I was planning uh, for a, to go on a cruise they asked me what line I was going on I told them Norwegian they were all like oh you're going on like an entry-level cruise I see I see but uh, despite the reputation that Norwegian has I gotta say uh, I have a lot of respect for this cruise line because they took great care of us the service was great it was clean like everything was just awesome it was so fun there was always stuff to do good activities just all around an awesome awesome cruise so that's just my quick shout out to Norwegian you guys were awesome to us and to all of our fellow shipmates and I think that you know obviously that that's what makes a cruise great in addition to whatever you do uh, when you get to a port and you do off the ship but like you spend a majority of your time on the ship so it has to be good and Norwegian made it good for us so thanks Norwegian oh, this red light is lasting forever so some of the other stuff that we did on the ship let me see in addition to all the stuff you can do in the theaters there's also a lot of stuff you can do uh, in in the restaurants and in bars and stuff they'll have special events like we did a whiskey tasting where they let you try a bunch of different whiskeys and scotches and they teach you about them and tell you where they're from and how to sort of like pick out the flavor profiles of the different whiskeys. That was really cool. They also had a similar thing for, uh, for margaritas. Oh, sorry, not margaritas, martinis. Different kinds of martinis and they taught us about where they came from and the history of the martini. And we actually, like they had a quiz at the end and whoever got the most answers right on the quiz got another free martini after the tasting so my girlfriend and i actually won that quiz and ended up getting blitzed but it was like there's just every day that you're on the ship is packed with stuff like that there's like dancing like you name it there's just so much stuff to do they've got an arcade they've got a casino where i lost a bunch of money but we won't talk about that <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just there's so much to do. You're always busy and you can just make yourself not busy if you want and like go up on deck and sit in the lounge chair and kind of relax, but there's just always something to do. 
and then the food the food was amazing too like everyone was telling me you're not going to be super excited about the food on this cruise because it's norwegian it's not gonna be that great but everything was delicious like i can't tell you how to they had like uh okay so they have a buffet and this is not like a cheap crappy like uh whatchamacallit like a hometown buffet or a golden corral or whatever it's like a, a pretty good buffet you it's like, like a middle of the road vegas buffet you'd go in there and you probably are gonna enjoy what you're eating they have some really good stuff in there and then uh what did we do like our second night we had a reservation we had made to go to a brazilian barbecue they have a brazilian barbecue on the ship and it, to be perfectly honest is the br the best Brazilian barbecue I have ever had in my life. I've been to like Fogo de Chao in Los Angeles where you spend like it's like 70 bucks to get in and Fogo doesn't hold a candle to the Brazilian barbecue that we had on this cruise on the ship. It was so good. They also had a steakhouse it was called Cagney's Steakhouse. So good! Like I don't know how they do it to be honest because uh, I don't know it's just so good so good. And the service was amazing too like and it i actually felt bad about this i have to just make a little uh statement here my this is my like 30 seconds of soapbox for this video series i know that the employees on these cruise lines are taken advantage of and sure probably they're living a better life on this ship and they're there because they want to be there uh, so it's not like they're being forced into it or anything, but uh, I know they live a hard life and they're sort of taken advantage of But that said man, they do a, an incredible job. None of them are phoning it in. None of them are half-assing it every single member of the crew Did an incredible job. They, the service was so good. We actually even got to meet the captain. Unfortunately, I don't have any video of it, but the captain was so cool. He was a nice guy like he would just talk to you about navigating the seas and uh, any technical questions you have about the ship or just whatever random stuff like personal questions he was so cool just like a cool guy and that like that's just exempt and an ex another example of how everything was so awesome on this cruise norwegian just put together such a good cruise i can't can't stop gushing about it but it, like that's really how good it was it was really really good even down to the guy who does the sheets and the, the garbage can in your room like they they don't just have a like a bunch of uh whatchamacallit they don't have a bunch of generic housekeepers that just kind of like do the rounds each room or yeah each room has one particular person who's assigned to that room for the duration of the cruise so you always have the same guy and you can like or guy or girl I guess and you can always like leave them notes to make requests and stuff you can and they, they like do little like random stuff for you they'll leave you notes to say like handwritten notes to say hi I hope you're enjoying the cruise is there anything I could do for you let let me know and they introduce themselves in the hallway they're like hi I'm the steward for your room so let me know if I can do anything for you and they like leave you little treats and stuff it's and I know they're doing it because they sort of have to and there's gratuity involved and whatever but it just like, you know, when you're dealing with somebody in customer service, even if they are doing their job to the degree that they have to because it's their job, you can tell when they're phoning it in. It's pretty obvious. And none of these people was phoning it in. You could tell they were all actually really trying to do a good job, which was really cool. I mean, it, it made the trip better. Oh, more railroad crossings. So that just about covers all the aspects of the cruise that were positive. The only thing I have to say that was negative, and this is by no means on Norwegian or the crew of our ship, but I ended up getting seasick, which was pretty gnarly. I got really nauseous and sick to my stomach, and it was just kind of bad for the first couple of days. And I ended up having to take Dramamine to just kind of help with it a little bit and it ended up knocking me out so most of the second day when we were at sea I sort of slept through it and it ended up being a sort of a loss of a day which sucked but uh, anyway later on in the trip uh, I sort of started adjusting to it but those first two days man and it caught me off guard because I've been on a lot of like I've been on boats tons it's like I can't even count the number of times I've been on boats in my life but it's always been smaller boats obviously and those smaller boats for whatever reason don't give me any trouble like sometimes like I could tell I'm getting a little queasy if the water's pretty rough and I'm on a little boat but 
it, nothing like I had on this cruise, man. I got pretty, pretty sick. I was, I was like legit out for an entire day, just feeling nauseous and gross, and it was, it was not fun. Uh, but anyway, that just about covers the aspects I wanted to talk about on the actual boat itself and on cruising. So for the next, oh my god, that was a heck of a bump. So for the next few videos, I'm going to actually focus on the stops that we made along the way, the ports we stopped at, the excursions we went on, and the sort of stuff that we saw in Alaska and in Canada when we stopped in Victoria. And actually in Seattle because we had a little surprise there, so keep your eyes open for the Seattle episode. I am going to close this episode out with a few little miscellaneous clips. Uh, from the trip, just a little stuff that didn't fit into the video very well. So you guys hopefully will enjoy those too. And I will see you guys in the next Alaska video, which should be the Ketchikan video. Alright, see you guys later.